We're gonna keep calm and carry on. Yassas, Melena Michaela. Okay, mit Maria. Und Englisch ist unsere Muttersprache. Mais nous parlons français aussi. Und wir finden es sehr, sehr cool, dass wir mehrsprachige Menschen sind und wollten heute einfach darüber reden. And that's kind of one of the things we do want to talk about in this video is being bilingual, trilingual, multilingual, however you identify yourself. So Maria. And why it's so awesome. Yeah. Um, so Maria, how do you identify yourself? That is a good question. Um, in general, if I'm talking to someone who really has no clue about learning foreign languages or linguistics or anything like that, I'll just go to the default term multilingual because I think that generally covers it. I think if you would take yeah. a look at my bookshelf, there's <laughs> this one bookshelf of mine. I have there's more books in it, and then I have another bookshelf. Make sure but, to clarify uh, because they might not. Be I know. I'm sorry. I, I I my most prized possession is my bookshelf. Um, but if you were just an average person who didn't know that much about language learning and you took a look at my bookshelf, you'd be like, oh, this is a multilingual person. They've got like. Or they waste Ten their plus languages there. Or they waste their or money waste on their a lot of books. books. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm speaking to anyone who has an idea about it, I will alternate between the terms um, bilingual polyglot and trilingual polyglot. Polyglot because, like I said, of the access that I have to so many different languages on an active basis, mm -hmm. uh, although those languages are at varying levels. And then um, bilingual or trilingual to highlight the number of languages that I actively use as, I'll say, a staple of my everyday communication. Okay. Um, so, for the past five years, my entire day is at least bilingual, um, in that I will speak, read, listen to, talk in German or English throughout the course of the day. Um, at some points of the year, uh, my French comes out a little bit more, so mm -hmm. I'll include uh, that when I call myself a trilingual polyglot. Okay. Especially, you know, as... If I'm applying to a job that's in a French-speaking area, I want to include that my intermediate conversational French is something that I actually use. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, that, those are the general terms I would go with. I almost spilled my coffee. <laughs> Should not be good. Um, meanwhile, I identify as multilingual individual. Je parle français très bien. Um, J'ai fait des courses au lycée et au université, mais aussi j'habite dans les pas francophone, j'étais en correspondante en Suisse, tu des choses comme ça. Donc, j'ai beaucoup d'expérience avec la langue française. Ala e wobaro mi lao linika, o hipo liore ala e tsiketsi. So, one of the other things that I pride myself on is having the availability of those languages at whatever degree they're at, whether I can understand German as Maria speaks to me, my communication in French and Greek, and also um, my sign, if you guys have seen some of my sign videos, I'm learning American Sign Language. So for me, it's really important um, to identify myself as multilingual because, like, I feel, I don't know. It I showcases like, yeah, it all showcases. those languages that you're influenced by. Because yeah. I would say that even if it's the most minimalist experience of a language possible, it's still a level in that language. It's still an experience yeah. in, a, in a foreign language. Well, one of the things that I would like to share is something that I had found on Tumblr. It's a French word that I think is very pertinent to who we are as individuals and... But as multilingual individuals, yeah. specifically. Um, so this French word is bel esprit. It's a French loan word. Bel esprit is categorized as a person with beautiful intellect. They're witty, cultured, and gifted. Due to this reason, a bel esprit is usually found engaging with witty banter. Their possession of a fine mind indicates that their beauty radiates from their natural sense of mental intuition and vivaciousness. As you can see, we definitely think very highly of ourselves as multilingual individuals. And even in general, I'm always like, props to multilingual people. Like, across the board, yeah. wherever you are on that spectrum. And that's one of the things that I love too, is when you do meet up with another multilingual individual, your- Conversations are the best. Yeah, conversations. Yeah. I was just in Greece and I had a Greek, English, French conversation with a man from Morocco, um, who was Which a shopkeeper cool. there. And I just, it was one of the best experiences I could have asked for. Um, but yeah. we- Yeah, we have a list here actually, because we tried to make this video several times, and but we're gonna stick to our list. And uh, one of the number one things that we find so cool about being multilingual is that you can read so many books. Par exemple, Le Petit Prince en français d'Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, eu par Sepoli de Marjane Satrapi. And reading in the original is unlike 
the best. That's the best. I cannot read Freud in translation, mm -hmm. ever. Uh, I had to read him in several classes, and I could not read the English. I would just literally read the German text. And then if I had to, I would print out a copy of the English one and bring it along Yeah. just to look up the main terms in English. That was it. But um, the other thing with books, like, one, you have more access to more books, which then... We were talking about this morning. You can use those books in Inst your research, so which instance, is awesome. For instance, I have a psychology book in French, Psychologue, Les Grandes Idées du Simplement. And which it, I also have in German, this book. <laughs> and it's originally well, in English, and we don't have the original. Yeah, we don't have the original so. in English, and yet it is a very simple approach to understanding basic concepts in psychology. And I was asking Maria if there would be any problem with me using this in my one class. Um, and feeling the need to message my professor to confirm with them, but we were saying having the availability of being multilingual, it opens so many more resources that you can incorporate into your professional field and your personal studies. Mm -hmm. Speaking of personal studies, I am cursed with an interest in studying a whole bunch of topics that are really taboo. Um, and from eating disorders to German history. So when I, as a multilingual individual, can get a whole bunch of books on these highly debated topics, mm -hmm. um, I can have access to, generally speaking, like the same amount, um, or the same information, just in a different language. So the conversation that would, you know, lead to some highly controversial debate doesn't even really start because it's like, oh, well, I could just be like, I don't know the, the English word for that, so we can't yeah. have a massive discussion about that as of right now but I can basically I can do my my very controversial studies, studies uh, in private yeah well another benefit that both of us agree comes with being multilingual is having basically the ability to communicate with all different types of people especially when you're on vacation which is so helpful I don't know if you've been to a foreign country where for instance I went to Poland with a with a German and um, we were there, and between us, we spoke like five or six languages at the time that we would just go places and be like, yeah, literally, we can communicate in any of these languages. Yeah. Sorry, we don't speak Polish. But yeah. we did learn some Polish for that trip, but still, you know. Then we had more access because we spoke more languages that, you know, at the hotel, we would speak German to the one attendant and English to the other attendant. Mm -hmm. And it was just, you know... Super, well, super easy to get around. One of the things my professor raised the other day is it doesn't just have to do with traveling. That in his 20s, which was about the 70s, he worked at a rehab center and he was called in to help deal with this woman who was very emotional and having difficulty communicating because of her emotional state. And one of the things that he said was very surprising was nobody in the 20 so minutes that she had been in there realized that she was deaf. And so his basic understanding of sign language um, allowed him to communicate with her enough to convey that um, she was okay, that she could calm herself down, and that maybe this wasn't the best rehab place, but was able to offer alternatives of places for deaf or hard of hearing individuals um, where they could get more, more care with an understanding environment. Um, so having a multilingual background can help you in more instances than just traveling. Yeah, I think effective communication on all levels is just such a desirable thing. I mean, yeah. why would you want to not understand things? But we were talking, um, you know, back to the, the vacation thing. We've experienced so much help as multilingual people. Oh, yeah. Um, you have your story about uh, the free, the free so, stuff. So when I was in, um, when I was in Greece, I went with my one friend who is actually from Mexico, so Spanish is her native language, um, but we were speaking in English, and we go to Greece, so I'm speaking in Greek and English, and I ended up finding out that the manager of the store was from Morocco, so we started speaking in French, and my friend was just idly standing by, you know, hands by her sides, not, not quite understanding, but, you know, keeping a calm demeanor. Mm -hmm. um, et quand je parle français avec lui, il me dit, ah, tu peux avoir ça, um free, c'est pas libre, ça c'est le mot que je cherche, um, mais ça c'est pas quelque chose qu'on peut faire si on ne parle pas les autres langues. Par exemple, um, when you go certain places, sometimes 
there might be communication so tourists do pay higher prices whereas if you could speak the native language you could talk and find out what the real price is yeah and yet that is a clever thing to do clever thing to know even just knowing that you know you get the native the native discount so to say when there, you go to foreign countries there was this um another thing i had seen on tumblr that i loved was it said un café for two dollars and then it said un café s'il vous plaît and it was like a dollar fifty <laughs> bonjour un café s'il vous plaît Merci beaucoup. And it was like... 50 cents. Yeah, it was like 50 cents. <laughs> and with that, with the ability to communicate with more people, you also have more access to more ideas, which I just think broadens your mind as an individual and it makes you more tolerant of things that you might not have heard in your culture growing up. And yeah. that is something that I think is totally worth it, you know, totally well, worth learning another language for. Well, even that with the different ideas, it doesn't need to be some existential, like metaphysical realization, realization yeah. but you can come to a general understanding. I mean, I was out with a friend the other day and we were talking about Frozen, um, Disney's recent film, for those of you who haven't clear, heard, haven't heard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, were, we were speaking about Let It Go, Libéré, Délivré, and I was speaking about the difference entre les paroles anglais, les paroles français. Il y a une parole spécifique dans le chanson français qui a dit um, Le vent qui hurle en moi ne pense plus à demain. Mais en anglais, c'était um, the wind is howling like the swirling storm inside. And the difference between the two is like the wind is howling like the swirling storm inside. And the French version talks about this this wind, this internal wind that isn't even thinking of tomorrow, which leaves the ideas of the repercussions and the like mm -hmm. consequences of your behavior. It's more of a reactive and raw expression of emotion. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I was trying to convey that to my friend, but having never studied French, she was at a little bit of a, um, at a barrier there, yeah, disadvantage there in order to fully comprehend. Yeah, and on that point, you know, having conversations with multilingual people, one of the most awesome things about that is that you can express so many more things in so many different ways that it's just, like, mind-blowing. You know, whether or not you're accidentally code-switching, code-switching on purpose, or yeah. just literally one sentence is in German and then the next is Spanish, English, French, whatever, you know, it's, to me, that is so cool because it's like you're the language chameleon. Yeah. I know we could go on for hours and hours on end about why being multilingual is literally the best thing. You have more job opportunities. Yeah. Definitely. Um, um, I'm looking now, like, you know, potential, like, summer job, just down the line, whatever. Well, even things. I know. I've... I've worked as a nanny and certain families were interested in me because of my multilingual background. They were saying, oh, like our, our last nanny was uh, multilingual. She spoke, you know, Chinese and um, English and they really enjoyed that. And I said, well, I don't speak Chinese, but I speak French and, you know, Greek. And they were like, great, we want our child to grow up in a language rich environment. Mm -hmm. And even something as simple as that, I would never have thought of that initially. Yet there's so many more job opportunities. Yeah, because like even now, like as I as I said, you know, hypothetical, what could you do in the summer things? It's like, well, I could go to Canada, I could go to France, I could go to Germany, Austria, Switzerland, you know, like, it's so, it really, yeah, I know, there's so many, there's so many, Réunion, je sais, c'est très joli là-bas, Réunion, c'est une île, francophone qui, qui a les plages, et, Le soleil tous les jours. Mm -hmm. Ça. <laughs> but even even in that respect, you know, there's more literal places where you can apply to a job at, and that yeah. gives you more access. I think that's totally, totally awesome. So one thing that we want to add before we close is a movement that's been started on YouTube about adding closed captionings to your videos. Maria, can you... So, yeah, um, I don't know if you saw the video that Tyler Oakley just posted about this, um, but the initiative going around is to have YouTubers make their material more accessible to more groups of people, um, specifically the deaf community, deaf um, the hard, hard of hearing, hearing, anyone that just likes re or likes watching things with subtitles, um, people that are Native. not native speakers, and then people that speak foreign languages primarily. So mm -hmm. I am currently going back and providing YouTube closed captioning for all of my videos, um, as well as a translation. Usually my videos are in English or German, so I'll provide the translation in whichever the other language is that I do not um, 
speak in the video. For and multilingual videos, there'll be the literal transcript for the video plus full-on translations in both English and German of those. And then if you would like to contribute, you can find information in the box below about writing in your native language. Uh, one so that you we can might translate, yeah, you can translate my videos if you would like to. And there's information on how to do that. It's so easy. Um, but that's down in the description box. And then we'll have more people that have uh, access, access to, to this channel and to these ideas. multilingual ideas. Yeah. yeah. So. And taxi, after in area, adios us. Ja, ich bin Maria Tina. Danke für eure Aufmerksamkeit und wir sehen uns bald. Tschüss. Yeah. I actually have to also say I'm not sure about next week's video, whether or not that will come out on time because I'm having a wisdom tooth removed. Um, and so my face may be swollen to the max and I may have difficulty speaking based on that. So or we'll find out. if you guys have a request for a video I can make, let me know in my stead. So we'll yeah. see. Also, just for the FYI, if you would like to support my channel or myself, uh, you can do so via Patreon. Or if you think, huh, I'd rather, you know, support you by you doing something other than making videos, I do tutor. Um, I tutor German and I tutor English. And if you have time on Saturdays, that is my tutoring day. Um, so let me know. Yep. Um, that's all for today. Definitely fun talking about linguistics, and we'll see you guys soon. Yep. Bye. Bye.